Hello everyone, welcome to my class once again and this video is the completion part of my previous video based on reported speech. Okay, so before I start or I proceed further, uh, I have just reviewed your work right, that you people had sent me and still I feel that uh, most of you are still confused with the term reported speech okay so in today's video let us uh, clear the concept as well before i start further now let's understand the concept about uh, speech a speech or the act of reporting is known as narration i had already explained you in the first video now what exactly is the narration Narration means like what I'm doing here, I'm narrating something, I'm explaining. Now I have my own way, alright, I'm using some medium to narrate. Now for example, what if I say I am making a video, alright. Now I am doing a narration, I am talking with you that I said that I am making a video. Alright. When the same message has to be conveyed to someone else, what you will say? You will say that sir said that sir was making a video. Now see, there were two ways I say I, I had put up in a direct way. Like I said, I am making a video. Now the same thing which you conveyed to your friend, you had conveyed in some other way. Now that exactly is the direct and indirect speech. What I told to you, that is a direct, there is no any mediator, there is no one else. And the message which I convey to you, alright, directly, the same message you have conveyed to your friend, that is an indirect way. Alright, so what you said, sir said that he was making a video. Now what we observe here is, we have only observed certain changes all right like in forming the sentences so that exactly is the direct and indirect speech so when we are talking about a speech or a narration okay so there are two types of uh, speech or narration a direct narration and indirect narration so that is only about uh, direct and indirect speech so it's not a big thing okay and one more thing, uh, as I was using the term reported speech, reported speech, alright. So, let me tell you one thing, reported speech and indirect speech are similar, okay. So, there is, uh, if I use the term reported speech, that I mean that I am using the term indirect speech, alright. So, what we are learning here is, we are learning how to convert direct into indirect speech. That is only the thing we are learning Alright, and uh, the next thing I observe is, uh, most of you are confused with this type of question, just look at here. He said, the earth is round. The earth is round, he said. Now what's wrong in the question? So the two questions, if I tell you to convert into uh, indirect speech, then what will be the answer? Is the question correct? Yes, both the questions are correct. It doesn't mean that the subject and the reporting verb has to be at the outset, that is in the beginning, before the dialogue. It can be after dialogue also. But when we are writing in an indirect way, this will be the answer. He said that the earth is round. Alright? So do not get confused with this type of question. Okay? So, with this note, let us proceed further and let us talk about interrogative sentence first, then we will switch on to imperative sentences and so on. Okay, let us start. Okay, uh, till now we have learned on how to convert direct into indirect speech. In a previous video I was talking about, uh, based on some uh, in, uh, affirmative sentences or either negative sentences. 
with different different tenses form. Now we will switch on to the interrogatives. As you know, interrogative sentences are those sentences which uh, ask questions. Now there are general certain rules. Okay, general rules on how we are going to convert direct into indirect speech when we come across with those type of interrogative sentences. Okay. Now the first rule is the reporting verb said S A I D said will change into asked. Okay, because generally what we are doing we are asking, isn't it? What are you doing? Do you like tea or coffee? Something like that. So definitely when we are converting into indirect form, the reporting verb said will change into asked. Now the first uh, rule is. Reporting verb will change into asked. And next point is the connector. The connector which we were using that in affirmative as well as in negative sentences. All right. Now that will change into if or whether. We use if or whether in place of that when we are dealing with interrogative sentences. Okay. For example, he uh, he said, "Do you like tea or coffee?" Now, when I convert this into indirect form, what is the what will be the answer? He asked me whether I like tea or coffee. Okay, whether I like tea or coffee. Okay. So what we observe here is, we have seen the reporting verb say is changing into ask, and we are using if or whether as a connector, and rest part that is the tenses part was same. Okay. So this is the first rule. Okay. So the second rule uh, basically is uh, we have to remove the question mark while forming into uh, indirect form. Now this is very very important. Now when we are changing, all right. When we are changing, we are changing the formation. We are changing the total formation in indirect speech. All right. So there will be no any question marks. Means the sentence has to be in a statement. The sentence has to be in a statement. All right. Whereas this is not applicable in active and passive voice. All right. In active passive voice, when we are changing from active to passive. It will be similar, right? If it is an interrogative, it has to be in in, in interrogative voice. But in case of direct to indirect speech, when we are changing it to indirect speech, the interrogative sentence or either the imperative sentence has to convert into the statement, all right? Statement in the sense affirmative sentence or something negative sentence, okay? Now the last rule is when there are Uh, sentences, all right. Where, where, where there are uh, certain interrogatives which start with wh, wh question, all right. Like what, when, all right. Why, when, where, all right. So in that case, the reporting verb will be same that is asked only, all right. When we are changing into indirect speech, but we are not using connector that is. If or whether, remember that one. If or whether we are not using when the questions start with wh word. For example, he said, "What are you doing?" He said, "What are you doing?" Now, if you convert into indirect form, he asked me what I was doing. All right. He asks me what I was doing. Now this is the way we can change uh, direct speech into indirect speech in case of interrogative sentences. So how to memorize is simply you have to memorize that uh, there are certain questions where the answer will be yes or no. Are you watching? Yes. Are you playing? Yes. No. All right. So, if the question will come in yes, no, like the first example which I gave, do you like tea or coffee? Yes, no. 
all right so in that case we can use a connector if or whether now if there are no such type of questions all right where there is no any you know come uh, where there will be no any output or where there will be no any result of uh, yes no all right in that case you can go with the same uh, word as a connector basically i said wh words all right so this is about integrated sentence now next we are, uh, we will see, switch on to imperative so sentence. next let's uh, talk about uh, imperative sentences as you all know that imperative sentences are those sentences which express command request all right suggestions so now how to deal with those type of sentences now the rule number 1 is the reporting verb here also like in imperative uh, interrogative sentence in imperative sentence also the reporting verb will change as per the uh, construction of sentence like as per the type of imperative sentence suppose it is order then it it should be ordered if it is a request it should be requested all right so that reporting verb will change as per uh, the uh, type of imperative sentence and one thing we are going to add is in place of connector that we use the conjunction that is sorry uh, we use the conjunction to 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 instead of that okay now for example uh, here uh, i said to hurry do not pluck the flower i said to hurry do not pluck the flower now do not pluck the flower now what is that one it is a order right i said to hurry do not pluck the flower now what would be the uh, in direct form i ordered hurry not to pluck the flower okay so this is how we can change okay one more example mm, i said to him i said to him please open the door please open the door now this is a request now what will be the uh, indirect form indirect speech i requested him to open the door all right i requested him to open the door now this is how we are going to change from direct to indirect in case of imperative sentence all right now the next thing is uh, when you will come across with some sentence like uh, when you will come across with uh, some uh, type of uh, word that is let l e t let all right the reporting verb is changed into propose p r o p o s e propose we say propose all right for example he said let us keep quiet in the in this matter he said let us keep quiet in this matter so he suggested that we should keep quiet in this matter propose or suggest as uh, in case of a uh, sentence starting with let l e t let okay so that's about our uh, imperative the last one is exclamatory sentence as you all know that exclamatory sentence express joy is it express the emotion like joy sorrow right now how to deal with those type of sentences now as i said in the previous that is when we have i explained regarding uh, imperative sentence all right the same in the same way uh, depending upon the uh, type of sentence we will also go in a similar fashion in while converting from direct to indirect speech for example if i say all right if i say he said he said plus i failed in the test now when we are converting into indirect speech what will be the answer he exclaimed with sorrow because that is a sorrow reason because he, he was very sad he exclaimed with sorrow that he had failed the test understood that he had failed the test so now another example he said 
Hooray! We won the match. Now, changing into inert form, he exclaimed with joy. Now here, he, uh, he is in a happy mood, right? He exclaimed with joy that he had won the match. Okay? So, in this way, uh, you know, actually looking at the type of sentence, alright, looking at the type of sentence, what exactly it is trying to convey, whether it is uh, with uh, different, different emotions, right, we can use exclaimed, alright, with joy or exclaimed with uh, sorrow, alright, based on this, we can convert into indirect form, alright, and one more thing, the words like Allah, Hooray, Oh wow, all these words gets eliminated, means we are not using these words when converting into indirect form. As I have already told you that when we are changing from direct to indirect speech, in indirect speech we are forming the statements. We are changing whether the sentence is an interrogative, whether the sentence is an imperative or whether the sentence is an exclamatory sentence. We are, what we are doing, we are simply converting that those type of sentences into statements. Alright? Statement means either affirmative or negative sentences as per uh, the type of sentence. Okay? So, with this note, uh, I have completed uh, this whole